Hello there, friendsicles. Today we have Cyril Gaz's lair. I don't really know if that's exactly how you say it, but that's the way we're going to pretend how you say it. Cyril Gaz's lair, which is basically a mountain-type level with a lot of spiders coming out. And if you notice the big cave right in the middle there, you're like, holy crap, there's a lot of spider webs over there. Gonna be a lot of spiders coming out. And the main problem is, you guys will see, the last two levels are actually surprisingly difficult, and we've seen, we see two new enemies that we've... Well, one new enemy and, of course, a boss that we've never seen before. And the new enemy is pretty darn ridiculous. And you have to beat him in a specific way. And it's kind of counterintuitive how you actually end up beating them. Uh, but I'm going to actually show you in, in the end, you know, in about 15 minutes or so, you guys will end up seeing him. And I'll explain why and how we actually end up doing this. Now, what I'm doing is I'm actually planning mostly for late game. So if you notice, like, a weird tower choice so far, it, it is pretty weird, I must say. But uh, it's really good for late game, and that's what we're going for, guys. Good late game. It doesn't really matter our early game. As long as we're going to survive and do no lives, we should be okay. You know, usually early game is not that difficult. It's late game that you have to worry about. So we got three artillery guys, uh, two more towards the left side and then one on the right side. And the one on the right side is probably the most important one. You need to get him up pretty darn quick or else you're probably screwed. And it's just because there's not that much other room for uh, uh, good towers on that side where you want them to go. Now, you might be thinking, like, oh, yeah, you got the middle spot right there, but you need those to be mage towers in the uh, early game, in, like, the uh, late game. So you pretty much need to do that. And then... Uh, the left side, even though you sp you really want to go archer towers because you know you got a lot of spiders and coming stuff coming on them over there, you still do need those two mage towers at least, at least those two mage towers. So just as a quick understanding of what is going on and how I play the game, because everybody plays different, and that's okay if you play different, but this is how I ended up doing this. I used Hacksaw, and the reason why I like Hacksaw is because he does have an insta-kill at level 4. He has a little screwer that screws the guys and insta-kills them, and I like that a lot. And also, he's very good for stalling. Now, usually, he's good for stalling the extremely strong guys, which is usually the guys that I need to stall. The small little guys you can use reinforcements for. And also, what I don't usually end up doing is I don't really use my barracks very often. Uh, third and fourth things is obviously reinforcements should be throwing the spears. They should not be uh, up in, in combat attacking guys unless they're all the way down at the very bottom. They should be throwing their spears the entire time. And usually what you can do is actually put them kind of out of the path and then they'll throw their spears. Uh, especially on a level like this, you can actually do it really easily. You can tell I'm just throwing spears consistently at all these guys and we're just taking them down hardcore style, guys. We're taking them down absolutely hardcore style. Uh, beyond that, you also have to work on your rain of fire skills quite a bit course, if you don't need it on a level like this, don't worry about using it, but most levels what you want to do is use your Rain of Fire and then send out the wave right after it, because by the time you get your Rain of Fire back, you'll actually use it again, and you'll be pretty darn set. Now, I just used it there, not because I really needed to, but just because I'll get it back in time for the next level, and also it makes it a little bit easier to attack these gargoyles and finish them off a little bit more quickly. So that's pretty much the reason why I did that. It wasn't really wasting a Rain of Fire, because watch, check this out, guys. Clickety-click, guess what happens when we clickety-click that next wave? It's going to be like instantaneous, Rain of Fire is back. So I'm going, I'm going pretty heavy magic. You know, I got three on the right and three on the left so far, and that's pretty much going to be consistent throughout this entire game. We're going to go really heavy on the magic. And uh, it's mainly for the teleports in the late game. Now, this is actually a tougher level than you might think. You'd be like, oh, wolves, who cares about wolves? They're so easy. Yeah, they look kind of easy until you realize that there's a lot of them getting really far in the map, and you have to use, again, your reinforcements quite a bit, and hope that their spears are going to take care of them quite easily. And it looks like today, yes, they do end up taking them down. A little bit scary, though, and if I didn't have that one barracks down on the bottom there, which I, again, don't normally get barracks, if I didn't have that guy on the bottom, I probably would have ended, ended up losing. And also, the bad thing is, is, because I'm going so heavy on the mage towers, uh, they're not very good versus these wolves and wargs, and, of course, white wolves which are even better versus the magic. Wargs are good versus magic, and then you got the white wolves, which are, like, super good versus the magic, and that's not good to have to deal with those guys, but you should be able to, especially with your reinforcements. Reinforcements are extremely strong. Now we got trolls coming out, so what is the big deal with the trolls? Well, level set, this, this level's kind of weird. You know, you got all, all these, you know, regular, like, sand guys coming out in the first few levels, and then you got, you know, a few spiders in there, and then you all of a sudden you see trolls, and then you get a big jumble of trolls right in the middle waves right here. You know, like, 7 through probably, like, 12 or so. You get a bunch of trolls coming out. Now, the thing about trolls is you usually need a really strong tower to deal with them. That's usually your best bet with the trolls. And that's what the Tesla Coil is for. So you notice the Tesla Coil is going to be a fantastic little buddy over here. He's going to take down most of these trolls fairly easily. And then, of course, I got 
Uh, a couple mage towers to help deal with them as well. You know, normally you don't want to go with too many archer towers against the trolls. Uh, archer towers can be used okay, but they're a bit expensive for how much damage they do, and also you need to get uh, massive damage really, really quick. So, you know, uh, things that do the most damage, of course, are arcane wizards. Arcane wizards do a fantastic job. Uh, Tesla coils, obviously, because they're attacking multiple guys, can do a good job. And then whenever you get your Tesla coils up, try and get the left side of upgrades all the way uh, pretty quickly. And the way the Tesla coils work, which I like to explain this just because not a lot of people really understand how this works. Uh, the left sided upgrades basically do damage to guys a little bit better overall. It's just like a, attacks like everybody in its range, basically. Whereas the right sided upgrade makes it so they can attack three guys to four guys, and then four guys to five guys. So if you have, if you think there's more than five guys within the range of your Tesla coil, you should probably upgrade him. Um, if you're dealing with a lot of really strong guys, where there's only three of them in, in, in a spot at a time, don't even worry about it. But how often does that happen? Not too often. So that's why you always get the left side upgrades first. It's just because they do more damage overall to all of the enemies, and then the right side ends up dealing with grouped enemies just a little tiny bit better. Lead a tiny bit better. And I actually went all the way up to an arcane wizard, and uh, that's what, the reason why I did those again because of trolls are uh, regenerator guy. They regenerate, so they get their health back really quick. You want to do damage really quick, which again, arcane wizards, one of the best things to do that with. Now we've got a few of these necromancers coming out. These guys are actually fairly easy to take down, my friends. These are. Uh, I don't know, they're, they're easy necromancers, what the heck are you going to deal with them? I and mean, we've got so, many art so much artillery stuff that we're just going to take them down like that. And of course, you know, I throw some reinforcements in there and it's just game over, man. Just game over. Oh, what else is cool and special going on today? I suppose not too much at the moment, you know, not too hard, not too fancy. Though, usually what happens is, is I don't know if you guys have, like, noticed this scenario of how things usually play out throughout the game, but... I usually have, like, round 1 through 9, which are normally just weaker, you know, guys, and then level 10 seems to be, like, the new, different type of guy that is, you know, like, unique to that level, or special, or something like that, usually reasonably hard. Um, this level, today, I don't remember what they are, I think it might be giant spiders, actually, level 10 could be the giant spiders, but... Usually it's just something different and weird on level 10 compared to like the first 9 levels or a special guy that comes out. And then you start getting uh, level 15, you almost always get a new special type of guy as well. Or a little bit before level 15 sometimes as well. And then of course, level 19 is sometimes another unique guy that you haven't seen before. And then level 20 is of course the final boss. And you know, usually a lot of the guys that came out on level 19 and you know, just any random guys that can be tough as well. Of course, all levels are different, but that's pretty much how uh, how it plays out most of the time. You guys will check it out in other future videos. Now, I am playing this on Steam. Uh, I am not playing this on the iPad or anything. Steam is... I just bought the Steam version, so I'm playing through the entire thing on Steam. I'm having some fun with it. I actually do really enjoy it. Now, usually, uh, the way I tried this actually the first time was with a lot more archer towers. And the reason why I did that was because, again, those, the the special guy that comes out on level 19, which I don't want to I don't want to give it away just yet. The special guy that comes on level 19 is good against uh, magic, so I don't want to get too much magic in here. But I played, I roll reversalized it, and it worked out perfect for me this time. Uh, so I'll show you guys exactly what I did. This is a post commentary, by the way, not a live commentary. Hopefully it's good enough for you guys. I usually end up doing uh, post commentaries in my Kingdom Rush videos because I get a little bit distracted when I'm when I'm playing usually, and I don't want to get distracted for you guys. I want to be, you know, all ready to go and tell you guys exactly what you should be doing and exactly what point. So you're noticing a ring of a rain of fire again. You know, at this level obviously we're not going to need it at all. You could use it, of course, if you really, really wanted to, but you're no real point to use it if you don't need to. Or if you're not, if it's not even going to help you out just a little bit. So actually, kind of unique. We had rocket riders coming out. Wow, that's that is that is pretty weird, isn't it? And uh, another thing is actually we're only about halfway through the video, but we're through only we're through already 14 rounds. So this means that those last rounds must be really tough or something. So uh, hacksaw is only level five right now. I could easily get him up to level six pretty soon. But guess what he's going to do to this little this little yeti right here? He's going to screw him. Get ready for it. Get ready for it. He's going to screw him any second now. His screw doesn't come back every you know very quickly, but it, when it work when it comes back, it's awesome. It's awesome. Actually, it doesn't even look like we need it that much. No, we really don't even need it. He didn't get it back fast enough at all. Wowzers. Maybe he'll get it back pretty soon and we can just go screw somebody else. I uh, know, I know, I say screw as in like a, an, like, like an action. Oh, he screwed the white wolf. That's terrible. We didn't want to screw the white wolf. We wanted to screw the yeti. Because the yeti's got 2,500 health. Whereas the white wolves only have like 400 or 500 or something like that. Maybe 800. You know, not a, not a, not a bunch. Not a bunch at all. 
So, a lot of shamans coming out. Usually, shamans are a pretty big problem for me, because uh, I go most of the and stuff, but no, not today. We got these Tesla coils going for me, and they're taking these things down hardcore style. Absolutely stupendous. Oh, and we're going for another Tesla coil that is the fourth Tesla coil of the day. Now, what I recommend doing with most Tesla coils is try to have uh, at least one on each side, then get some support towers, and then end up getting more Tesla coils, or switch over to Bombard, you know, those great Bombards, a little bit later on in the game. You can do that for sure. Full oh, shiznit. Let's see if we can take down this ma magma elemental. Whoop! We screwed him down a known health in just an instantaneous second right there. Absolutely fantastic. So now you guys are starting to realize like why I like this guy. It's just like you could take down 2,500 worth of health in an instant. What other champion can do that? Not very many at all. And even if he does a lot of damage, you really can't do something like that. And you know what? He doesn't put a lot of guys out. He doesn't like do anything other special like that. But that move alone is what makes me like this guy. And yeah, there's a couple other cool moves as well. A little bouncer thing, my Bob. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Pretty cool indeed. Oh my, we're gonna rain a fire these magma elementals. Taking care, taking care of them pretty well. I really can't complain too much. And look at that, he screwed another one of those elementals. Oh, but but he's dead. He's come on, hacksaw man. I thought you were gonna be able to handle those little guys, but nope, you were not. You're not at all. Now what I usually do is I like to get these archer towers, and I almost always get a right-sided upgrade for those guys, Wrath of the Forest. And the, the reason why I love Wrath of the Forest is just because it slows guys down just enough to make you get extra damage with all of your towers. And it works out stupendous if you get at least one of them. Usually on each side is what you want to get, but I decided to go mostly magic towers on the right side. I wasn't going to be too worried about those guys. And if I want to, I can get, of course, some more later on, some more arch towers on the right side as well. But right now, I'm trying to clean things up quickly. I, of course, I love to get through this game, these uh, levels quickly. I uh, want to make sure you guys get a good, solid walkthrough quickly. That's like the main thing. People don't want to sit here for 35 minutes watching somebody play a game in slow motion and everything. So I try and make the rounds go by as quick as possible. Not only because of the extra gold, but because it makes a better video as well. It definitely does. So we get through these magma elementals pretty darn quick. You can tell they haven't even gotten really past like my first test of coil yet. Um, and if they do, they get completely demolished by these uh, left-sided wizards over there. Look at them go. Oh my goodness gracious, those were amazing. Some more necromancers coming out, but as you can tell, I've had no issues with the necromancers yet. Usually they cause me a bit of problems, but not today at all. So look at Hacksaw. He's probably got like three health down there. Oh my goodness gracious. We saved his life for sure. And if you guys haven't realized how to get your hero back in health, you got to move him away, don't let him attack for a little bit, and he comes back with his health. It'll pop back pretty quick. It only takes about like five seconds or so of not getting, not attacking, and he's he's golden. So now we're noticing something a little bit odd here. Now, when I first saw this, I didn't think much of it. You know, you're just like, oh, there's more enemies coming out. But now that I think about it, I'm like, why are all these fire guys coming out on a snow level? And I think that well, you think they would have like some snow guys coming out, you know? I mean, it just makes sense to me. I guess it doesn't need to happen that way, but... And why don't they melt the snow that they're walking on? Or are they just not hot? Or are they just red just because they're red and they're not actually hot? But I thought they were like guys from hell or something. I don't know. That's what I thought. So I still look at my barracks down in the bottom there. <laughs> it's kind of funny. I haven't even upgraded it at all. I don't even think I've... I've only needed it once so far for those uh, wolves on level like 6 or something. Whatever. Whenever the heck those guys came out. That's the only time I needed them so far. And also, a good thing about not upgrading them is that if if you guys ever do get to them and then they start killing them, you can upgrade them really quick and three new guys will pop out again. And then if you know what, they die again, you can upgrade them again. Whereas if you upgrade them up to like the third tier or something and your guys die, you cannot upgrade them again and you won't get new got a new series of or new set of guys popping out. So that's why I usually end up leaving them low tier unless I like really actually kind of need to upgrade them. Because gold's usually not a big deal. Usually gold, you're gonna have the gold when you need it. I don't usually upgrade too many things mid level when I'm having a lot of problems. When I'm having a lot of problems I usually try and pay attention to microwing and making sure all the guys get killed. I almost always go for no lives lost, but every once in a while I don't. And here is the new enemy. Oh my goodness gracious, what the heck is this thing? Like I told you guys, it's uh, it's the Salgar, you know, layer spider thing. That's the best way to put it. It's the best way to put it, guys. And they're extremely strong. But what I did was I actually, like I said, they're good against magic. But what did I do? Well, I got enough Tesla coils where they can do some solid damage to them. But actually, the main thing I did was just upgrade every single one of those arcane wizards up to teleport. So I just got a crap load of teleports and just send them back and back and back, and they just keep getting Tesla coil killed. And it's amazing. But again, I tried this with Archer Towers, and I got completely ripped. 
They just walked right through my defense. There was like 20 of them. They just they walked right through, and I was like, this is impossible. This is absolutely impossible. I can't do this. And then I, I went with the magic instead. Worked out perfect. Don't know how, don't know why, but archers are not good versus them, even though they have high magic resistance. So that's just a quick heads up there, you know. Again, counterintuitive. You wouldn't expect it, but it, it worked. And uh, not even worked. It worked with flying colors. It, flying colors everywhere. It's like a rainbow. Like a rainbow in my mouth. Kind of like Skittles. Skittles are like a rainbow in my mouth. But Skittles aren't as good as this rainbow in my mouth. Mmm, delicious. Alright, so here we go. We're going to start off this next wave pretty darn soon. But again, they are getting teleported still quite a bit. And the, the best way to t use the teleports, by the way, guys, are, are not to get, like, third-tier teleports. Just buy the first-tier teleport every single magic guy. Or even in, in general, as, as, as far as towers go. You usually don't want to get too many, like, third-tier upgrades for your tower. Get all of them up to the first tier, and then switch over to the third-tier upgrades. Most of the time. So here's this Serral Czar, or whatever the heck his name is. The big spider thing. It's his lair. And he's coming out, and it's round 20 here. Oh my goodness, we're gonna rain a fire of him really quick. Is it gonna be tough? Well, I mean, we got a lot of magic towers, and we got a lot of, uh, artillery towers, which... Both of those are not good versus strong guys. <laughs> so, especially because, uh... Uh, normally you think about this as ha him having like a magic resistance. He doesn't have any magic resistance because he's not he's not one of those other little spiders in the corner there. But still, he is fairly difficult, and he just eats your guys like that. He just he just eats them, and they're gone. They're gone. So what you can do is start you know with any of the extra money, just get some death rays and stuff that'll help out doing some extra damage. And you know he can also insta kill some of those spiders as well. Uh, if any of them do end up walking in front of him. So that's definitely an, a nice little bonus there. Hacksaw, instantaneously killed. A little bit upsetting by that, because you know what? He has like 600 health or something like that, and he just gets insta-killed. I mean, it's a little bit ridiculous. He, it shouldn't happen like that, but it's all good. It's all good. We're going to get all our Holy Order guys eaten, and you know what? We're going to end up taking this guy down a little bit close to the end, but overall not bad at all. I really didn't use any... Uh, that many reinforcements or anything. And I do have an extra rain of fire here to use if I need to. Let's just use it randomly over in this little corner right here. And boom, shakalaka. Taking care of the rest of these little spiders. And we are going to end up winning this game, my friends. Winning this game, indeed. And again, just death rate up just a little bit. There'll be insta-kills and some of these bigger bigger spiders. You obviously don't get to control the death ray. It would be fan freaking fantastic if you can control the death ray. And insta-kill some of these high-level spiders or high-health spiders. But the game lets you play it through and just does it on its own. It'd kind of be cool to have like an ability. I don't know if you get like uh, if you guys ever watch my Bloom Star Defense videos. Uh, you can use the abilities. It's like in the bottom left corner. You click on it, use the ability. If you like, could use it and then click on one of these guys and kill them using like micro, like your own ideas to kill a certain guy. That'd be kind of cool. And you know, you could be like, oh, you have eight death rays ready. And you could like blah, 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 blah. maybe it'd be a little bit too overpowered, but it'd be still be pretty cool. Anyways, that's going to be all I'm going to have for you guys today. Hopefully this helped you guys out. As always, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't. And have a super duper delicious day.